All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're gonna be talking about adjusting valve lash. Uh, what is it? Why is it important? And usual ways of accomplishing the task and somewhat unusual ways. Now, please excuse the crudeness of the visual aid here, but I figured it would be a little important to some that uh, a general idea of why valve lash is important is represented here. So real quick, this is the workings of a typical valve train to a flat tappet cam engine. Um, here's your camshaft here, your push rod with your lifter. This is your rocker arm and your valve, including a spring. Now the valve lash occurs right here. And what this measured distance represents is ensuring that the valve opens correctly and closes correctly based on manufacturer spec. Now, just going back to basics real quick, the camshaft is spinning. It has a lobe on one side and a heel on the other. When that lobe contacts your uh, lifter, it pushes upward, that force travels up the push rod and pushes on the one side of the lifter. The lifter, I'm sorry, rocker arm, will turn on a shaft, usually, and in turn will push the valve open. As the cam spins past the lobe and onto the heel, the push rod lowers, in turn, the rocker heads back up and the valve continues to close. Now, the typical scenario here in order to adjust these is there will be a nut or, I'm sorry, there will be a screw on one side of your rocker arm. Uh, some of them will be um, friction fit in or there will be a lock nut involved depending on the year, manufacturer, so on and your adjustment occurs there with the assistance of a typical feeler gauge. Now, there is an issue with doing it this way if you really wanna break it down, and here's why. Now, of course, over time, the rockers themselves will wear. Not only will they wear in the shaft area, but they will also wear where the valve contacts the rocker. And that's what I'm representing here. Now, of course, over time, you should probably replace these when they get this bad. This is a bit exaggerated. But the point is, is that when you go in here to check this fit with your feeler gauge, you'll be measuring between the valve and both sides of these flat sections of the foot of your rocker. So you got this big void in here that's not being accounted for, and this rocker will be all sorts of noisy. So there is a way to harness this measurement and that is through that old png valve gabber now i'm a sucker for old school tools myself but i mean just get a look at that it's presented very well in this wooden box it has all the original instructions still intact and also includes some more instructions that came with it in a larger uh, cardboard box this is the main body here uh, has interchangeable drums for different manufacturer engines and also different feet for different manufacturers. And the general gist is it's a dial indicator on a spring actuated drum that's adjustable. And you hook the spring loaded section under your rock arm. The top section rests on your valve and you use this tool, they actually thought to include a hook. I had to look this up because I was the first thing I thought is, oh, some wise ass just made some aluminum doodad and threw it in there. Now, this actually came with it. You would use this to pull up on the other end of your rocker so it was flat on the opposite side on the valve, and that would zero out your gauge. And then the spring would automatically bring it up to wherever it's at, and you make your adjustments from there. Now, it's important to mention, everybody has their own different way of doing this. My particular way, 
doing it with the engine running is out of the question. And the proper way to make sure that your particular valve train section that you're adjusting is in the proper position is to go and do your research and find out whether you can you can use a remote start button and disable your 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 uh, coil so the engine will not fire, or you can turn over by hand with just moving the crank with a um, half inch uh, ratchet or, or breaker bar, you know your choice. The point is, the most important part of adjusting this particular setup right here, let's say this is cylinder one on the intake, is you find out in what position that crankshaft needs to be so that the cam is on the heel section. So the toe of your cam is farthest away from actuating this valve open. Reason being, so this is as far down as it can be and this valve is absolutely lutely shut. You will have a gap in this section right here to, like I said, typical scenarios, run your feeler gauge, but this is your starting point. This is where, whenever you're adjusting a valve, this position is critical. Now we have the valve gapper in place and my cold adjustment where I like to have it is about 16 thou. So right now it is all the way up. So I want to zero that out. And with their patented little hook here, I guess, whatever. I can see that I have about 15 thou. So, I mean, what's a thou amongst friends, but. So, I'm just gonna loosen this just a hair. Okay. Reposition your gapper. Re-zero. Pull up, and I went a little too far. Bring her in just a hair. All right, position her there. Pull up. Gives me about 16. So I'm happy with that. All right, so when it boils down to it, this is the anal retentive way to go, in all honesty. Um, it is a lot more accurate than your typical feeler gauge based on the scenario. If you had brand new you know, rockers on there, this will suffice just fine. This will definitely get you by. But if you gotta have, if you gotta go to 11 kind of deal, this is definitely the ticket right here. Thanks for watching.